Um, I'm in uh, performance materials, and Merck has uh, a biocidal active substance, which is a repellent against mosquitoes, ticks, but also other um, types of uh, insects. And based on that, we are heavily involved in the EU regulatory process for such substances. So that's something where I would just like to give you some information about. So just a, short, a few words of introduction. Repellents are recommended for personal protection against biting insects. And we all know, we have been discussing this all day, uh, they are often factors for diseases. Personal repellents should be applied to skin directly on body parts which are not covered by uh, clothing. If there is no other protection possible, such as mosquito nettings, which is, of course, a very important uh, uh, protection method. If we're talking about repellents, it's all about efficacy test performance. Um, we all want to know how long does a repellent last? How long will I be protected from bites? So um, we try to define protection times, but they vary a lot. And there are multiple factors as to why they vary. So it can be the formulation type and the technology. It can be the users themselves. It can be the season. Uh, the substance concentration in the product, of course, plays a role, but double concentration doesn't necessarily mean double efficacy. Different target organisms all react differently to alternative formulations, and there are a lot of differences in test setups. You can do tests in the lab, you can do semi-field, you can do field trials. So last but not uh, least, there are also very differences in how authorities evaluate protection times. So now about the EU and the regulatory framework. So we have the active substance IR3535, that's the brand name, and uh, it's regarded as a biocide, and that means that the biocidal products regulation applies. And in fact, repellents are classified within this regulation as product type 19, which is called repellents and detractants. And as such, these active substances undergo an evaluation procedure and after that has been completed, then also the products have to go through an authorization procedure. This all lasts extremely long, so at least five years, and basically for IR3535, we submitted the active substance dossier already in 2006, and we are still now in the product authorization process. So we have submitted product applications for one reason. We do not produce these products ourselves, but we have customers, and they uh, produce these products, but they cannot deal with all the regulatory aspects which play a role in the EU. So we decided to do the work for them and help them get their authorizations. But what we learned now is that there are still a number of uncertainties. There are still heavy debates between the authorities in the EU, and there's definitely no consensus uh, between the member states on how to evaluate repellents for personal protection when it comes to application rates. Why is there a lack of consensus? It's all about defining what is the safe but effective dose. How much do I need to apply to be protected? There was one problem because uh, at the active substance level, when all the member states are basically looking at and evaluating a substance, there is no real evaluation of efficacy. So at that point, when also other repellent actives were under evaluation, a discussion on efficacy was basically only very minor. Proof of principle suffices for that. At the product authorization stage, of course, we need to demonstrate the efficacy. And this holds true not only for our active, it also holds true for other actives like DEET and Icaridin, for example. 
But the guidance for doing efficacy studies it is at the moment in the EU definitely not sufficiently precise. So every lab is doing tests in a slightly different way. Every authority is asking for something different and every authority is also evaluating the results in a slightly different way. Generally, if you talk about laboratory testing, uh, the application rates are quite high because in that case you also have a very high biting pressure and basically you are testing in a worst case scenario. This is not always relevant for the repellents we use on an everyday basis. Then there is the other part, guidance on human health risk assessment, which also is part of the evaluation process, is also done in a very conservative way. Basically, they are also trying to do a worst case assessment on that end. That these things do not match is something which is known since 2013. And unfortunately, we find ourselves in the situation that there is still no solution. So repellents should be safe, but they should also be available on the market in order to protect us. So for the efficacy testing, there would be a way forward is to reduce the application rate to a realistic value in the tests. But if we do this in a worst case test setup, then we come to very short protection times. That would mean that you would have to do multiple reapplications on a day, theoretically, in order to be protected. And that in the end sums up to a high internal dose which is then used for the risk assessment. And then there's the big question at the authorities, is this still a safe use? On the other hand, you can do the risk assessment um, by using a very high application rate which means that you automatically come to a high internal dose for the risk assessment. But then comes the big question, do I need to advise consumers to use this high application rate and then tell them not to reapply a product on a single day? That's the only way to get to a safe use. But is this the way we want to go? Just some examples. This was a very complicated slide, but it's basically very simple to, to explain. We have um, basically tested four different mosquito species in Brazil. We tested a control, which is 20% DEET, and then we tested three different IR3535 formulations at two different application rates, just to see what happens in a cage test um, re with respect to the protection times. And as you can see, uh, DEET was only tested at a very high application rate, which is two grams per arm. And there we had the full test period complete protection. So we stopped the test at 10 hours. And then you see also that this was the case for two of the uh, IR3535 formulations and one which has the lowest IR3535 uh, concentration uh, has only eight hours protection times but then again the concentration of the active is uh, only half of the other ones. We also tested one gram per arm and there you see that there is some reduction in protection time but it's definitely not half of the protection. We did a similar situation with another laboratory test, which is against ticks. And basically, in that case, you use volunteers and you draw some marks on their arms, you treat part of the arm, and then you just place the ticks one after the other on the arm and see if they crawl up the arm. That's the normal behavior. And if the, uh, the tick then senses the treated area, it either drops off or returns and that's basically the sign of repellents. So we did this with a relatively high application. Normally it's even done with even higher application rates. And there you see that there is a complete repellence, but there is some difference in how the ticks behave. If you then go down 
with the uh, concentration or with the application rate, then you also see this in the test. So the, the ticks start behaving slightly different, even though there is still complete repellence. One last point I think is important to mention, because these processes, these regulatory processes are so immensely expensive, there is basically no new development ongoing on new substances which might be alternative to existing repellent substances. And also um, uh, many companies just give up putting these products on the market. It's not only an EU problem because um, also in other regu uh, regulatory uh, frameworks all over the world, we find ourselves in, in similar situations. So this is not a very nice topic, but I think it's relevant. And um, I think we should also discuss with authorities when possible to really tell them we need these products. There is a real need for them. So that's what I wanted to tell you. <laughs>